Friends, I want to welcome uh, Tony Dahlman. The title of the speech is Twitter and Communication. All right. Go! Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. Uh, after that eloquent introduction, I can hardly wait to hear what I'm going to say. <laughs> I, I've had a really busy week. I had a doctor's appointment yesterday morning. Actually, my arm still hurts from the tetanus shot that I got yesterday. But good, news, and good news is my rusty nails party is back on, so that's good news. <laughs> uh, near the end of uh, the appointment, I went up to the doctor and I said, Doc, I think I have a Twitter addiction. The doc said, sorry, I don't follow you. <laughs> okay, that was a test for how many of you actually know what Twitter is. Uh, how many people here actually have a, have a Twitter account? No, no. okay, so th that's good news is we're going to be able to teach a lot of you about Twitter today. And we're going to learn about what it means to follow people. So when we're talking about Twitter and communication, we're going to talk about a little bit about the history of Twitter, a little bit about the function of Twitter, and then we're going to learn about how Twitter helps us communicate. It helps us be much more focused, and it helps us be brief. And so we'll start off, we're going to talk about a little bit of the history of Twitter. Uh, Twitter was invented in March 2006 by Jack Dorsey, who we have up on the screen here. Uh, Jack Dorsey, he attempted to make a, a communication service, and he did it using the SMS protocol, which is known as the short messaging service protocol. And a lot of you know what SMS is, because that's what you use to text message on your cell phone. So he attempted to come up with a whole uh, broader communication system using SMS. And that is why Twitter today is often known as the SMS of the internet. Uh, Twitter has grown into a much more active site. It currently has 200 million active users and is up to 340 million tweets every day. Uh, the comedian Billy Vaughn said that uh, youth is when you are allowed to stay up late on New Year's Eve and middle age is when you are forced to stay up late on New Year's Eve. Twitter has uh, some outliers going on. The most active day for Twitter was January 1st, 2013. Believe it or not, it happened during midnight to 1 a.m. during Japan Standard Time. At that time, there were 33,388 tweets per second going on. Presumably a lot of Japanese people wishing everybody a Happy New Year. So Twitter has definitely become a really big uh, website out there and become very popular throughout the country. Um, here's an example of a Twitter page. You might recognize that guy on top. This is my uh, Twitter page. And uh, just talking a, a little bit about the function we have, uh, everybody on Twitter has a Twitter handle. My Twitter handle is the very creative Tony Dolman. <laughs> And uh, as, you, as you will notice, that uh, there's, uh, you have three boxes on top, 1,130 is the number of tweets that I have done. That's actually pretty uh, moderately small in terms, of, uh, in, in terms of tweets. I follow 537 people, meaning that uh, there's 537 Twitter accounts that show up on my news feed when I go in my Twitter account, and there's 164 people who are following me. So that way, those are people who have uh, constant access uh, to my tweets. And so this is basically the basic structure. Uh, this is my page where you can see all the tweets that I have done. And you can also see that there's uh, some sections uh, for some pictures off on the side. So uh, this is the basic structure of Twitter and uh, what happens when you go and visit a Twitter user's page. Uh, there's two symbols that tend to throw people off a little bit when they're uh, on Twitter. And the first is the at symbol. Uh, the at symbol is usually it precedes somebody's Twitter handle name when they're talking about Twitter. And the at symbol is what you use if you want to send somebody a message, you put at and then their Twitter name. And that is uh, what you can do if you want to send a message directly to them. If you include the at symbol and their name, it's going to show up on their timeline. It's also going to be something where people can see that you are sending a message to that person. So if you want to send something to me, you would say at Tony Dolman. I really enjoyed your speech at Toastmasters today. That'd be an example of a way to use the ad symbol. The other popular symbol that is being used is the hashtag symbol. Uh, the hashtag symbol is a way to uh, delineate different subjects that are used in Toastmasters. Uh, it is, uh, it's, uh, one of the ways that you can do it is that if you're uh, tweeting about Toastmasters, is that you can say, I had a good time at the hashtag Toastmasters meeting today. 
That way, if anybody wanted to search about Toastmasters, your tweet would pop up when you're doing that. Uh, a lot of times, you can also have hashtags assigned for events, and that way, uh, people that uh, if all the people at a different event all put this hashtag of a tweet at the end of uh, at the end of their tweet, everybody will know that they're at that event. I know I'm going to a Nationals game on Ju on July 3rd where they're encouraging everybody who's tweeting at that game to write vote Nats so that when they're voting for the All-Star game that more people are using that hashtag. Uh, one of the most prominent figures of Twitter is the limit on the amount of characters that you can use. A tweet can only be 140 characters long. Now, a lot of people look at this and say, how in the world can I come up with a message that's only 140 characters long? But I think this is actually one of the greatest benefits of Twitter, that you need to be extremely concise when, you are, uh, when you're putting a tweet out there. You can't go on and on and on. And I think that's a very important message that we learn both as speakers and as communicators. And you want to be very careful that you're very concise in your message and that you're very clear. Uh, William Shakespeare said, uh, brevity is the soul of wit. But, I think, it's, uh, but it, I think if you want something more entertaining, you move to Mark Twain, who says that it takes him several hours to prepare an impromptu speech. It's very important that you become very clear and become very concise in the messages that you are using. Something else that is very important in using Twitter is that you want to be very focused and purposeful in what you're saying. Some of the greatest Twitterers out there will uh, talk about a single theme. I mean, we have a lot of, it's, uh, there's a lot of people who are using it on the political side, there's a lot of people who are using it on the social side, but they always want to make sure that they're always making sure that all of their tweets are about on a social scene. You don't want to be really blurry like we have on the left side of the screen up here. You want to be clear, and that is what is going to get you the most followers, and that is what is going to allow you to get the mo to get the most people who are understanding your message. So, in conclusion, we've looked at a little bit of the history of Twitter. We've looked at some of its function. And we've also looked and see that how you have to be brief, and that you also have to be clear. So, now that we've learned a little bit more about social media today, I want to wrap it all up using cupcakes. On Facebook, you like my cupcakes. On Twitter, you say I'm making a hashtag cupcake. Pinterest, here's a cupcake recipe. Instagram, here's a vintage photo of my cupcake. LinkedIn, my skills include cupcake making. Foursquare, thank you for visiting my cupcakes. Here you are the mayor of cupcakes. Uh, we'll skip down to Google Press that you want to share your cupcakes with Google employees. I hope you've learned a lot about Twitter today, and I look forward to seeing you in the Twitter version now. Mr. Yeah.